the Stourhead Estate in southwest England. Of its 2,500 acres, over half is farmed. They've been raising cattle here for generations and have recently returned to old-fashioned farming techniques to feed their animals to produce high-quality beef. These cattle are fed on the grass silage and they're also fed on cracked wheat that's home produced. We just crack the wheat and feed it to them and they get seven or eight pounds of cracked wheat and ad lib silage to feed them. It's no different than what we've done for the last thousand years really. It's just in the 40s and 50s we got pushed into this chemical triangle where the, the oil companies and the chemical companies pushed us into trying to produce two leaves of grass where one grew before and now we're back to doing things what I call the proper way. We're doing it with rotations, you know we're growing clover lays and after the clover lays we grow wheat and then we grow roots and then we go back to grass lays again and we're putting in a sort of a typical four course rotation again. We're using a traditional like we're, we're growing beans this year to give more pro protein to our diet uh, for the cattle's diet um, and it's doing all the things that grandfather taught us to do you know what I mean? grandfather was no fool really he he could always grow this farm here for instance in the 30s kept 100 100 milking cows and they did it by producing a lot of manure in the yards here they strolled up the yards all winter to produce as much muck as they possibly could they had one man all the year round spreading muck on the fields so it's just to get rotations back and get the humus back in the soil. All the animals in the farm are being bred for their meat. Their diet and lifestyle reflecting what's required to ensure the beef is of the highest possible standard. The buyers keen to pay a premium price for their produce. People respect the sort of things we're trying to produce. We're trying to produce something that is good flavour, is hung well, and it's, it's a commodity that is traceable. We can trace, you know, where it came from and where it goes to. You know, a lot of the local uh, meat people around here are, are flogging the Brazilian and Argentinian beef. You know, I mean, there's a lot of, in the meat trade, there's a lot of hokey pokey goes on. We're just trying to prove the traceability and prove that we can know where, exactly where it came from. A lot of the schools now and people, you know, people running sort of, uh, um, uh, dom domestic bursars in schools and people like this are trying to try and trace where it does come from. They want to know, they want to trace what their ch children are eating. The Aberdeen Angus beef from the farm is sent to their own plants for cutting. They process around 300 animals a year here. It's hung for three weeks at three degrees Celsius to ensure the meat is naturally tenderized for eating. This method of processing meat is a far cry from the commercial plants serving supermarkets in today's modern world. This, you put pride in your work, whereas the commercial, it's sort of hack and slash, get it to look the same product at the end of the day. You know, it's a case of they use machinery, whereas this is done by hand, and it's virtually tore away, and the, the butchers like trim it off. And the skill factor is not there like there is in this, whereas the modern way is all using machinery. It's more labour intensive, more physical, but the, the, more job satisfaction in this. A key factor to produce this quality of meat is hanging it for three weeks. During this time, the meat begins the process of breaking down with fur drying on it. When this occurs, it becomes easier to cook and much more tender to taste. But more of the meat is lost in the cutting process. There's a word called maturating. It's basically breaking the fibres of, of the meat down. It, in, a, in respect, you're saying it's, it's, it's going rotten, but it's not. It's a process. You keep the meat at a certain temperature and it's breaking down and that's just the age of the, the fur is, is just the age of the animal being three weeks. It's basically like a brisket of beef. It, it's very tasty, very soft. The, woman, the housewife wouldn't have to cook it so long. Whereas today you buy a brisket in the supermarket, you have to virtually boil it to death to get it to be tender. And the taste is not there. It's felt this type of small scale, high quality farming, rearing and producing is the way forward for farmers to survive in the meat industry. This is the future really. I think the commercial side of it is gone because all the plants are shutting down because of the overhead costs. 
and it's down to the little independents like us to get a, a good product and people will go back to meat. To ensure the meat and other produce is sold locally, the estate has its own shop which has become renowned for its quality. As well as the butchered meat, they sell 10 varieties of sausages and other cooked meats and locally sourced products. It's become a haven for customers looking for the best in farm produce. We've got a very loyal regular following because of the excellent meat that we have. Um, but we also have quite a few visitors and what we're actually finding is a lot of our visitors are coming back, calling in on the way down to Devon or on the way back up to London. So they just nip off the A303, drop in, pick up their food ready for when they get home. More and more people want to know where the food comes from. They want the staff to be able to guide them and give them as so much information about the products as we possibly can. The cakes that you see behind me, we also sell the flour that makes those cakes. We also sell the eggs that goes into those cakes. So we try and interlink our products as much as we physically can from the local community, which is very important for people to know where things come from. Our regular locals are elderly, so they love it because we've gone back to the old traditions, really, of packing the shopping for them, carrying it out to the car and spending that little bit of time. But then the people who come in from London and elsewhere, they think it's very sweet, very lovely in that respect as well. And because we can spend that little bit extra time explaining where things have come from, that also attracts them back in the shop because they don't get that everywhere else. As time goes along, more and more of the shops like ourselves will become stronger in the market. And, and yes, there's always a place for the big boys, there always will be, because there are people out there who will live, have to live on a budget and therefore can't always go to this extent, but even so, the odd treat is always nice, isn't it? The estate also has its own spring, and to capitalise on this, one local farmer has been bottling the mineral water and selling it. Having previously been in dairy farming, he turned to water seven years ago, taking a natural product on his own doorstep to make bottled mineral water and a non-alcoholic elderflower drink. We had a dairy farm originally um, and because of the milk price obviously it was not viable to carry on milking. It was only a, about an 80 cow dairy herd um, so it wasn't viable. So we had done milk retailing prior to that for 10 years so we had experience retailing and um, dealing with customers. Um, so we decided we had a water source that was um, already supplying the farm and um, we decided to go into selling water and the non-alcoholic drinks. It's this type of creative thinking that's helping farmers today come up with new ways to increase revenue from their business and stay in farming. Things have totally changed from my father's generation, um, you know, when we were just farming things have changed unbelievably. Um, I mean, if you look around the farm here now, we have the water and the drink side and we also have a livery yard. Um, that is what utilises the ground and that's what utilises the farm. Because of my generation, I enjoy doing the water and I enjoy doing the other side. I think probably the older generation might struggle with the concept of, um, you know, doing something a little bit different. You've got to be constantly looking at new ideas, um, new things to do. Um, you have, because of the way it's so competitive out there, we've got to have an edge on what we're doing with our product. And it's a matter of constantly looking to do different things and new products all the time. I mean, we have a very, very good reaction. We have letters and phone calls from people saying that it's absolutely fantastic and where can they get hold of it, which gives us the confidence to do what we're doing, really. Much of the Stourhead estate is woodland and run by the UK's National Trust for people to visit. Food served at its restaurant on site comes from the estate's farms, attracting visitors keen to sample the local fare, including meat, vegetables and mineral water. It's this combination of producing high quality products and delivering them direct to the public that's allowing farmers on the Stourhead estate to find new ways to make money and preserve their traditional way of life in Britain's countryside. I have Paris each year.